Hi, this is Giovanni. This is uh, the eighth in a series of tutorials on working with track meshes for R Factor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an existing track and increase the polygon count in 3ds Max. And this track is is pretty standard. It's what you're going to see uh, if you open up quite a few uh, tracks that are already out there floating around, including my own. You'll see that the 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 track object is often broken up into uh, several different pieces. Uh, this is pretty standard. This way, you see that there's you know there's straightaways and each set of turns. Um, the first thing I need to do if I plan on slicing this track up is combine them all into one single mesh. It makes it a lot easier to extend my slice lines uh, onto the straightaway or back into the corners without you know jockeying back and forth between objects. So select one of the pieces, doesn't matter which, right click and select attach uh, and then go around the track and, and left click each piece to attach them into a single object. This is where you have to be careful not to have too much open in Max where you could easily you know, attach a light pole or a wall. You're going to left, uh, excuse me, right click and choose select so you're no longer attaching pieces and now you have uh, a single object that is the entire track mesh. I'm going to rename it. Um, just I'm in the habit of renaming things, and I recommend it. That way, you're not accidentally overwriting originals. Now I can select polygons that I couldn't select before because they were broken into two different pieces. So good. So that's set up. Now I want to increase the polygon count. Well, 3ds Max has a tool uh, or subdivision surfaces. It's the HSDS modifier. Select that, and you can see a modifier popped up top there. I'm going to select polygon. I'm going to click and drag and select all of the polygons of the track. And then press the subdivide button, and you can see I've magically duplicated the polygon saturation across the entire track surface. However, what's that all about? We got broken pieces. There's pieces of mesh that no longer are attached and you can see that it is exactly where our elements were, or excuse me, our different uh, track pieces were. Look at it where you can actually see the texture and you can see that is definitely broken. So we broke the track. Now what you don't want to do is, is go to, you know, is collapse this down and then go to vertex movement and try and move things together that's that's an insane amount of work and it's really not the right way to do it so deleting the the modifier and going back to our, our track here um, you can see if you select uh, the element selection on the editable mesh you can see that we have four different elements and each one of these elements is what was the original track pieces so we have four elements that exist within one object and and therein lies the problem and if you select vertex you can see that if you select a vertex on the back straight away, it's a single vertex. A vertex in the corner is a single vertex. But when you select what looks like a single vertex where the two meet, you can see you now have two vertices selected. And this is where the two different element, the, the two different objects overlaid on top of each other. To fix that, we need to switch this to an editable poly, vertex selection, select the, the, the area that had two vertexes, and left click and select collapse and our two vertices have now become a single vertex. We need to do this all the way down the line where these two elements met. And what you can see is now when I select element and click on the track, that is a single element and you can still see I have the other two I still need to do. So that has been fixed. Now I need to fix the rest of the track. And it's not that the track's broken, it's just that when the track is cut apart into different pieces, that's you know that's how it's exported. Uh, when you combine the, all the pieces together, you know, if you're not doing the the HSDS modifier, it doesn't matter, you know, who cares. But if you are doing the modifier to increase polygon count, you kind of have to do this or you get those broken bits. So all of the, uh, I'm just going through here and, and 
collapsing all the vertices where they were duplicated at the element intersection and now when I select element I have a single element across the entire track so now when I when I apply the HSDS modifier I should have clean unbroken track lines select all the polygons press the subdivide button go to those problem areas and they're fixed clean unbroken track lines uh, complete duplication take a look at it with the texture just for sanity everything looks good except for that squiggly texture there's a good chance if you went out there and drove on it there may be some some altitude issues as well so looking back at the wireframe you can see where the squiggle is you can actually see that in the wireframe and it's based on that you can see that the the polygon directions changed in the wireframe so I deleted the modifier selected the modifier again select all the polygons now go to the squiggle spot and you can see where there's a crossover where the the direction of our polys switched so I'm control clicking and deselecting everything around that switch it's uh, three columns here I'm, I'm deselecting I'm gonna press subdivide and you can see it 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 duplicated it divided actually all of the polygons on the track except for that one area now that's exactly what we're looking for so collapse two and yes and it is now permanent texture looks good our poly count is increased no broken bits and we now have a track that is ready for uh, some more elaborate slicing which we can then break apart into pieces later if we choose if you select the material ID high you can see it selects two rows of polygons instead of one it, it, it knows where it's assigning what and as you can see there I can go ahead and select a, a more narrow strip of track up top and name it cushion if I choose to I can I can do some different stuff that I wasn't able to do before. So that's it. Um, it's it's starting to combine some of the techniques that were shown earlier. Um, anytime you're working on someone else's track, obviously it's it's recommended that you have some dialogue with them if you're going to start chopping and cutting their tracks up. If it's one of my tracks you're looking to to cut up, don't need my permission as far as I'm concerned, but you have it. Uh, have fun, you know, make it better, share it with everybody, share it with me. Um, better tracks are is, is, is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, and this is, uh, you know, this is one way to to update some of the older tracks that are floating around out there that have a uh, fantastic shape and, and they're gorgeous tracks. I mean, they're prettier than anything I've been able to make. Uh, but the, the poly row is is definitely you know holds them back from you know being able to provide the type of racing that uh, a track with uh, a higher saturation of polygons and a, a more elaborate track slice can uh, this is this is one of the methods I use and felt like sharing so hopefully there was something in there that helped or gave you some ideas on your current project um, keep building tracks good luck have fun